All right, so here I'm gonna show something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. This is a Cisco 6015-6015 DSLAM. So these are, it stands for D, like Digital Subscriber Line Access Multiplexer. It's basically the piece of equipment that's on the other side of a DSL line. So this is something I've wanted to have and be able to mess with for a long time, but I was, able, I've ne I was never been able to find one for a good price. Nor was I able to find one that I could find any information on how to configure, how to set up, anything about it. I just couldn't find the info. So a few weeks ago, I was talking to one of my friends who's working on a Zycel DSLAM that they're borrowing from another friend. And I just decided to look around on eBay and see if I could find a DSLAM for a price that I didn't require selling my kidney to afford. And here we are with this perfect listing for the Cisco 6015 DSLAM. And it's perfect because I'm very much used to Cisco gear. I do a lot of Cisco voice stuff. So, I mean, networking isn't my strong suite at the moment, but I'm trying to learn it. And I thought, you know what? If there's any DSLAM I'm gonna be able to figure out how to make work, it's gonna be a Cisco one. So here we are, Cisco 6015. So this is very old, it's from 2002. It's ADSL, not ADSL2 or ADSL2 plus or anything new, it's just straight ADSL. And it is, I guess I'll just kind of give a hardware overview. So it powers off 48 volt. Just ignore the extremely questionable alligator clip leads powering the negative 48 volt supply. I need to get a proper connector for this and I will at some point, I just don't have one. I wanna show it. So this is how it's powered, breaker here. Right above that is this little card that has two Amphenol connectors on it. So those are the typical 25 pair connectors you see on a lot of telecom stuff. So this unit can supply up to 48 lines of ADSL. I only have one line card in here, which each line card is eight ADSL lines. I do have the rest of the cards I need to fill this, but I, one, don't think these can handle the current, and two, know that this little carrier access negative 48 volt supply I'm using to power it is not capable of the current. So we're just running one card at the moment. So yeah, those are the Amphenol connectors with just the straight DSL output. Um, you can't, I know some of the DSLAMs out there, you can just feed phone lines straight into them or they can provide phone lines. This one cannot. I'll have to see if I can find, there's a, there's a separate piece of equipment called like a pot splitter or something. There's a technical term for it, I just don't remember it. That just takes in your lines from the DSLAM and your lines from like a voice gateway like this VG350 down here or something. And then mixes them down to one two wire line that you would then send to the customer and they can have phone service and DSL service on the same two wires. So eventually I'll get that to work, I'm sure. But yep, two ports for 48 lines. Up here, well, I mean, technically that's 50 pairs, but it only uses the first 24, but whatever. That's pretty common with these connectors anyway. Up here, we have an Octal E1 card. So I can't actually use it in this one because the controller, like the CPU card that's in this DSLAM doesn't actually support this little E1 thing. Not really sure why it's in this chassis if it's not supported by it, but I'm not complaining. Um, it was intended for bonding a bunch of E1 lines together to use as one data link um, as like your backhaul or your trunk back to your central office. But again, my controller card doesn't support it, so I can't really mess with that. But anyway, speaking of the controller card, bad lighting, I apologize, but here is the controller, the very top thing. So we have uh, two fiber connections. Now, these are ATM interfaces, which stands for asynchronous transfer mode. I didn't even know that that was an interface until like about a week and a half ago. So I still don't fully understand everything about it, but I've gotten it to work. My understanding is it's a 155 megabits per second continuous asynchronous data link, and you can have virtual connections and interfaces ran over it. You could do data and voice and other services mixed over one interface. It's really interesting and I want to learn more about it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. 
But in any case, that is the intended interface for your trunk or your backhaul back to your CO or whatever main network you have all your DSLAMs on because these units were intended to be on closer to the customer's houses. I mean, you'd typically put these DSLAMs in like one of those boxes that you see at the side of streets along with a battery and a power supply and whatever other line protection and other stuff you have with it. But in any case, that's your trunk back to the main network. And then there's another port here. It's also an ATM port. And that one is used to link multiple DSLAMs together. So I'm not using it though, because I only have one of these. Then we have the typical Cisco console and auxiliary ports here. These are serial ports for management. It also has a 10 base T ethernet port here. So I'm not using it. I haven't really figured out a way to route traffic between a DSL interface and that ethernet port yet, because all these DSL interfaces show up as ATM. It's as if, I mean, really all this DSLAM is doing is it's just being a straight up gateway between the ADSL interface and the ATM interface. And then you're just defining connections between each ADSL port and the, like virtual connections on the ATM trunk. So that's that. Now I have thought of a way to potentially route the traffic over this, but in any realistic scenario, you wouldn't be doing that anyways, because that's only 10 megs a second. This is 155. If, I mean like two, two DSL connections could saturate that port. So yeah, it makes sense that it's not exactly meant to route traffic that way. And then on the far left here, we have a fan tray. It has two fans in it. Now, right above it, I have a Cisco 7200 router. Now, I learned that these exist based on a video that Cloud Retro put out, and I just knew I had to have one as soon as I watched that video. These are beautiful routers. Now, I got this specific unit because it has these Octal T1E1 cards in it. I wanted to use it for voice, which it works great for voice. I've tested it. It shows up just like any other E1 or T1 port on newer Cisco routers, but... Um, it's also the, like the same era as the DSLAM, so I just figured, you know what, this is a good pick to be the router to use in this setup. So I got an ATM port adapter for it, and it's a little bit cursed, but this fiber connector is not put in all the way. I'm not entirely sure why, but if I do plug it in all the way, it's like it's too strong of a signal and it doesn't, in the RX alarm light comes on and link goes down. So I'm assuming I'm gonna to have to put an attenuator in line with that, but for now, it's just not put in all the way and it works okay. It, it'll occasionally disconnect, but whatever, I'll fix it later on. I just wanna show this, cause it's cool. So that's there. And on the configuration of this router, I just set the encapsulation of this interface to PPP and set it up with a virtual template. And it has a local username and password defined in it which is what my modem is using to authenticate. So this whole network is running PPP over ATM rather than PPP over ethernet. I'd like to do PPP over ethernet. I just haven't figured out how to do that yet. So we will figure it out eventually. And this also has this T3 card in there. I'll probably make some other videos on this router cause it's really cool. But otherwise in the far back of it, we have one gigabit ethernet interface here. And this just goes straight into my little HP Perker switch down here, which is on my local network. So that just goes straight in there. Now it's unconventional how this is configured, but after it goes through PPP authentication on the router, the peers get an IP through DHCP relay. So really the public IP address of the modems that I connect to my DSLAM down here are assigned by the DHCP server on my home router. So they get local IPs on my network. I could have set it up with a local pool on this, but I mean, that would be like a triple NAT out to, <laughs> out to the outside world. And it's honestly just easier to configure it for DHCP relay as well. So my idea is eventually to make like some really overcomplicated network, but for now it's working. Now, as for a modem down here, we have this Action Tech C1000A. These are super common. They are still in use. This is a very new modem. Well, new relative to most of the equipment in my rack. But um, these are very common with CenturyLink, but you don't have to use them with CenturyLink. 
That's why I'm using this modem. And I'm glad that I saved a bunch of old random DSL modems that I've collected at garage sales and the electronics recycler I volunteer at and just wherever I can. So I'm actually really happy that I have a bunch of these modems because now I can actually put them to use for once. So in any case, first time I've ever seen this, DSL light is solid green, internet light is solid green. So this is connected and authenticated and passing traffic. So that's the modem I'm using. Now if we go to my laptop over here, it's just plugged into the modem over ethernet. But if we ping 1.1.1.1, it goes through. Now that looks like a really slow connection and that's because it is. This DSLAM is very old and it's also going over ATM into an old router. Pinging my home router from this computer, like just straight through all this and through my switch to my home router is like 35 milliseconds. So it's not great, but I mean, I can't really bash it. It's old equipment. And that's what I kind of wanted anyway, is an old DSLAM because I like old networking stuff. But if we take a look at the modem's configuration, actually let's run a speed test too. So here's the lovely speeds here. And this number brings me back to days when I was on cable instead of fiber. But the thing is, this is the download speed of this DSL connection. And that was like my upload speed back then. So there's the upload speed of this connection. It's very slow. And this is the fastest I've been able to get it to connect. So I don't think the DSLAM is capable of any newer, newer protocol that can do anything faster than this. But I mean, again, old equipment, what can you expect? So this is the modem's configuration page. It probably logged me out. Yep, it did. Of course. If you would guess my password is password, you'd be right. So typical CenturyLink modem management page, except this is not on CenturyLink by any means. It's all on this local network here. So time and date is set. That's a first. I haven't really seen that before. Um, but if we look at the status here, DSL and internet are showing connected. Our great connection speed here that is probably one of the lowest you can possibly see on these modems. So that also is connected. And if we look at this, here's the public IP, or rather this would be your public IP in a normal circumstance. But in this case, it's a local IP on my local network. The default gateway, uh, well actually that's the DNS address, I'm not sure why that's set for DNS, but it works clearly. Um, down here, no IPv6, because I don't have that set up, and I think if we go to DSL status it should show the gateway, right? No? Maybe not? Oh no, it'd be internet status. Let's see here, yeah, so remote gateway address, this is actually the IP address of the 7200 router. So, IP address that the modem was assigned via DHCP relay, IP address of the router that's running PPP. So, there's all that, that's showing connected. In terms of how I configured it, I just went to advanced setup and I went to WAN settings. And I like these modems because you can configure them to whatever you want. So, I picked PPPOA instead of auto select, and then I just set a username, test CPE, and that's the username and this is the password that were set as a local login on the 7200 router. I could do it with Radius and I probably will eventually, but for now, just local. These I just left default, so PPP Auto Connect is enabled and PPP credentials not required is disabled. Kind of a double negative there, but... And a dynamic IP default setting, so that's all I had to do in the modem, really. I mean, I started from a default configuration and that worked out. So that's my DSLAM DSL modem mess here that is in a very unconventional configuration that you'd never really see. But I'm just really happy this is working and I'm finally able to mess around with DSL which is a system I've wanted to mess with for a long time. So I guess I guess cable is next up. So maybe I just need to get a CMTS now and then we'll be, we'll be good. But yeah, that's the Cisco 7, not 7200, well, that is a Cisco 7200, but Cisco 6015 DSLAM.